Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to be starting part one of a four-part series on making a copper rose sculpture. Hope you guys enjoy this series and we'll get started. Okay, today we're going to be going over the layout of the bloom and how to cut out the bloom itself and the way that I lay these things out. So if you have a pen and a piece of paper handy, now would be the time to pause the video and whip it out. So we're going to go over this pretty quickly. So the basis of doing a rose, you have to have a large blank, a medium sized blank, a small blank, a tiny blank, and a calic blank. And that's all standard five row, you know, five petal rose kits that are available on the market. Unfortunately, there's no one making copper roses that I know of. And if they are, they usually have some sort of rag or rough edge or something like that that you got to clean off and burr. And a lot of times you're just as quick of just buying the copper, scribing it out, and cutting it out yourself. So the sizes are going to go as follows. We're going to need one large blank. That will be four and one half inches. We're going to need our slightly smaller, medium sized blank. That is going to be four inches. We'll need the next size down from that, which will be three and one half inches. And then the final one. We'll need two at two inches. One of the one of the two of these is going to become the calic, and the other one's going to be the center portion of our rose. So there's the sizes that you guys are going to need for this job. Give you a moment so you can write those down. Hopefully you got it. Everything's good. Okay, so now I'm going to go over the layout. How do I lay out my roses? Well, you can write, lay them out however you see fit. I want to draw this. This is larger than life. I'm just going to draw it that way for right now. You can lay it out however you like. I generally like to take and say this is your, your largest blank, our four and a half inch blank. I like to find a center point and scribe my circle with a pair of dividers. I'm bringing them out here, like so. You set that on, and hey, I actually got that pretty good. You scribe out your circle on your piece of copper, okay? Then once I have this, I have to decide how many petals <coughs> I want to make this. Usually roses come in a five petal pattern, but when you first get started, it may be easier to do a four petal pattern. To make a four petal pattern, it's really simple. You just crawl, draw a plus mark and then cut on that plus mark. To make a five petal pattern, that gets a little trickier. You will have to draw more of what looks like an X with a line. So it's a little more, it's, it's a little, it's a little more difficult to draw a five petal pattern. Now there's multiple ways you can do this. I find that it's easiest if you try to draw it with your mind first. So take a piece of soapstone and draw out what you're thinking for your pattern and how you want it to look out like and then we can go from there. So say that's going to be our five petal pattern. Now you can begin to work out how you want to take and draw these lines and how they need to intersect or how you need to do your quadrants. So we can put this in practice in the next clip. We'll go ahead and scribe out stuff and we'll start the cutting. But try to think that this is a rose. This doesn't have to be perfect, okay? because it's natural. 
if you make something that's supposed to be natural look perfect, it looks forced. And we don't want that. We don't want something that's going to look forced. We want something that looks very, very natural. So I'm driving, drawing some additional lines here. I'm more or less just kind of showing how it's going to be straight cuts. Take out these little curvatures here. But you guys can kind of get the point here. It's going to come in. I'm going to have some straight cuts. And the reason why I'm laying this out is so this way I know kind of how my lines need to intersect. And I can figure it out then with a square and what those angles are there. So you draw it out like you're going to cut it out first on the table and make sure that's what you're wanting. Keeping in mind the main thing that you want to do is you want to stop all the cuts of your petals down at the same place. So if you can imagine like a three quarter inch circle or maybe just a little bit less like a half inch circle you're going to want to take and maintain that circle or that ring of where your cuts come and stop to maintain the integrity of the material for where your attachment point to your stem is going to be. So that's pretty much it guys. It's pretty simple. You find your circle, you find your center, maybe draw another circle if you're not quite sure and you really want to make sure it's accurate and then draw your connecting lines through the piece and you're good to go. You just start snipping it out and go from there. So after you get it cut out, we'll move on to the texturing of it and everything. I won't go over that today considering I did that in another video. I'll put all the links to the other Steel Rose video I did in this series so you can watch those individual steps so I will just time lapse this part. I won't be doing a lot of explaining and stuff. And then I'll be back with some, some thoughts and the reason why I've done some of the stuff I've done with the copper. But essentially, if you can make a steel rose, you can make a copper rose all the same. So be right back with you. Okay, everyone, I got this cut out. Next, I'm going to show you on the large petal pattern here how to divide your individual petals into quadrants. So you say, well, this could be awfully difficult. And you're right, it could end up being difficult, but it's not really going to be. So I'm going to try to work with the camera here and show you guys how this is done. What I like to do first is I like to set my ruler or scribe point right on the edge of the dot the center mark and then I draw to that dot now picture like you're drawing a plus mark through the piece we're gonna roll it once again like we're drawing a semi plus mark through the piece if I'm doing this correctly, let me think. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. Or actually, more like an X. An X would be better. Sorry, guys. A little hard to remember all my faculties here when I'm doing this. Like so. And hopefully you guys can see this. So now we have a pie. Mark. Divide it out of here. The next part, we're going to draw a line just straight down. And then as you guessed it, we're going to divide that in half to make our five petal pattern. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Just from the center mark to the outside edge. So I'm going to lay it across, make it to where it looks like it's got equal parts on each side. Once again, this is organic, so it doesn't have to be accurate. So now we've got our, pie mark, our peace sign there. 
And we're going to roll this around, and we're going to take about what the two points are here, the halfway point. That's where we're going to draw our next cut line. You just want the petals to look mostly even. They don't have to be perfect, guys and gals. You just want them to look mostly even. So hopefully you all can see that. That's how that's shaping up. And last but not least, we'll do it again. Center line. Find what looks about right for dividing it in half. And go ahead and give it a mark. So now we've got our five cut lines for our five petal pattern. One, two, three, four, five. Make sense? So you'll do this on all four of your petals. Just as easy and simple as that. Now you can see I drew it all the way down to here, but we're not going to go all the way down to the dot. In fact, we're going to leave ourselves a little. And just for camera's sake and accuracy's sake, I'm going to go ahead and draw me roughly what would be about three quarters of an inch diameter circle. You can make this whatever you want or whatever you feel comfortable with. Three quarter just seems to be good enough of a flat place on bottom and there you go so we'll take all of our cut lines down to that inner circle line and then I'll show you how I'll go over the next stage with you Okay, everyone, here we are back at the workbench. As you can see, I made some really pretty whirly gigs here. The next part in this process is pretty simple. We want to remove a little extra material between each one of the petals. So this way, when we texture them, the petals have room to spread. Also, we want to nip off these sharp corners because, well, rose petals don't have sharp corners. And... It would also be a big ouch if somebody runs their finger along those edges. So we take off the sharp corners. So that'll be the next step in this process. I'll come back to you all after I have that done and these, these uh, pieces textured. And then we will go ahead and punch the holes. Okay, everyone, here we are. We're all done with the texturing process and the trimming them all out and everything. It's just kind of a long process. It's really no big deal. The next step is we're going to take and punch the holes here. You can drill these if you like. Center punch them, drill them, however you like. We're just going to take and use a punch and die method to go ahead and punch out the holes where we will attach it to our stem. We'll do that on all five of our petals, but you may be asking yourself, where's the other petal? Well, that's your other disc. I haven't drawn that up just yet. I'm going to save that for after I get done uh, punching here in a second. Well, I'm going to do those first, get them all punched out, show you that method, and then I'll come back here and show you how to lay this one out. Uh, just a subject of time got mixed up here. We've had to do some other stuff off camera. So I'll come back to this and I will show you how to do that. Essentially, you're going to draw a star for the most part uh, like you've 
everybody's drawn a star in grade school. It's essentially that. So I'll be back with that here in a minute, right after we're at the anvil, and we punch all those. Okay, everybody, here we are at the anvil. So the tools we're, we're going to use is essentially a die and a punch setup. Pretty simple tools. This is copper. We can do this cold. We don't have to worry about doing this hot. In fact, if this was thin material like steel, you could also do it cold. Wouldn't have to worry about doing it hot. This is just a piece of, I believe, three-quarter inch square, mild steel bar that's had a couple holes socked through it. You don't want this to be high carbon steel because you don't want to take and damage your punch if you get a little misaligned on one of the holes. So, I think everybody can see that, yeah. Okay, I'm going to step off to one side here. Maybe we can make this a little better. I think I'm getting a weird shadow here. Okay, you guys can see it there. So essentially the process goes, you don't want too big of a hole where it can just fall in. It'll drag too much material down into it. And you don't want too small of a hole, otherwise the punch won't be able to shear off the plug. You want the hole just right, so this way it just fits in there. Just the end of the punch fits in. So now we're going to go ahead and line up our theoretical center. Look for the center on top and just kind of imagine it underneath and give it a set down. I don't know if you can see that little bump there. Yep. Okay. Once we've established that, we're going to just go ahead, give it another knock or two until it dries out the punch. The slug. And there we have it. So as you can see, there's one punch hole. Pretty quick and easy. No real advanced tooling here, guys. Um, nothing to worry about on that. So we'll just go right on to the next. Once again, imagine the hole right under where you want the center to be. Put your tooling on top. Give it a punch. Hopefully it found center. Now it should help it find the center. And voila. Sometimes they punch clean, sometimes they don't. But there you go. So that's essentially all that's essentially all there is to it, guys and gals. You can go through these pretty darn quick. And it does not take long at all. You just have to kind of aim it, guess for it, find it. And if you notice, it'll make kind of a different noise when it goes through. And some of these will really stick on there. And you can always put them back in and try to shear them off a little bit. Or you can take care of that with a file or a grinder or something of that nature later. Or just a pair of pliers and just nip that little bit off if it sticks. It doesn't really matter. Well, the sharper the punch, by the way, the sharper the end of this punch or the flatter this is, the better off this works. So we're going to look for that theoretical center, put it on top, give it a tap, refine the mark, give it another tap, the plug's nearly shorn out, we'll go ahead and give it one more. Of course it's got a stick on me. And like so, that one still sticks again too. It's no big deal, I'll show you how to take care of that. I, I do get just a pair of pliers here. And take it off. Just like so. No big deal. And that's fine. It's okay if these are not perfect. You can always, like I said, clean off the rag. A little bit of rag it's got there flash with a file. It's no real big deal. And just like so. All those are punched and ready. So now we'll go back over to the table. And while we're there at the table, we will cut out the little calic. And I'll show you how I do those and lay those out.
Okay, everyone. So now I'm going to show you how I take and do this. As you can see, we're real close. My big fingers are in the way. Essentially, anybody who's ever been through grade school has probably drawn a star before. That's essentially what we're going to do here. It makes it super quick and easy. You just start, if you haven't been, or maybe you're from a country that that was not prevalent. I live here in America, and all kids would do this to pass the time when they were bored. You just gotta draw it up, draw it down the other way, go across the other way, cross the other way, and then finally connect the two lines. That's essentially a star, and just so happens, it's a five petal calic. So, all we'll do is cut that calic out in that same direction. I'll be right back with you after I get it punched and textured. And, uh, yeah, that'll be it. Okie doke, everyone. Here we are. So, hopefully you all have enjoyed this video. I'm going to leave you with a few finishing notes. This will be the end of this video, the first part in this four-part series. I chose to do it in a four-part series because making a rose is a long process. It'll take any of you guys, you can expect to spend at least a full day, a good six to eight hours to make a rose. And frankly, you all are not going to stick around long enough to watch an entire video for six hours long. Um, if you're like me, you've got the attention span of a gnat. So, well, maybe maybe a bullfrog or something like that. I'm not quite a gnat, but I do like long-winded demonstrations, but I know most of you don't. So, I want to leave you with one final thought on this for this little demonstration here. And it is about the texturing that you put on your petals. This here, you have to think about how this orientation this orientation is going to be on the stem itself. This is going to be on bottom with these parts being curled down and so this surface will be showing. Same thing with your petals. But the difference is on your bottom petal you're going to have texture from the back side and that's what you want to see. That's what really brings these roses to life is having texture in every direction. That is why we use a wooden block to texture on versus the anvil. If you just used an anvil, you would knock off all your texture from the back side and with some door marks and things that we don't want. Now, a little labor saving tip. Knowing that these are all going to be stacked together, like so, well, almost like so, layering like that, it is only necessary to fully texture and really heavily texture the furthest most out petals. Because as you can see, they're going to be getting partly hidden by every successful, every successive petal going forward. So on this inner one, as you'll see when we bloom the rose, this one's going to be mostly closed. So it needs just enough texture on the outside rims so you can see that, but it doesn't really need the texture going all the way to the bottom. As where the largest petal, which is going to be the fullest, biggest outside portion, needs the most amount of texture. So hopefully that helps. You guys, on the first part of this journey of making these this copper rose with me, that's it. That's going to be it for today. I greatly appreciate it for everybody who stuck around and watched this whole entire video. If you liked it, give it a big thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a big thumbs down. Either way, I enjoy both. I greatly appreciate it. Be looking for part two in this series where we will be going over some things about the stem and how we're going to attach the rose the copper bloom to the steel stem so be looking for that in 
the next video in this series. If you're watching into the future, it'll be one of these links, one of these cards that are popping up right now. So anyways, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't done it yet. Make sure you hit that notifications bell. I post twice a day, seven days a week. Thank you all for watching. God bless you all. Have a great day, and we'll catch you on the next one.